Good morning. I'm excited to talk about the topics that we have for our listeners today. We're um, talking about some things that are often overlooked, especially in the black community. Those things are Alzheimer's and brain awareness and men's mental health. We have some special guests who will join us to discuss some great health resources and information. And then finally, we will provide you with some current local updates to protect your family through our arm in arm against COVID-19 updates. Okay, so today I have with me Miss Kimberly Mitchell from Brain Booster. Welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And then I have Brandarius Johnson from Mental Hope. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate the opportunity. Okay, with that deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just telling him that he should be a, a radio DJ. He has the perfect voice for it. Um, as we get into today's discussion, I just want to bring up that I'm really excited to have you all here. Um, we were looking at the different health awareness months, which we do every month to think about our topics and what we want to bring to the black community and brain and health awareness, just overall mental health awareness is something that's you know, big in the community right now. Everybody's talking about mental health, right? It's a great thing because there was so much stigma around it for years. You know, we didn't talk about Uncle Crazy Joe. <laughs> we just called him Uncle. He crazy. And, you know, and that's it. But now we are actually talking about mental health. So I'm so excited to have you all here. I know that we... Um, uh, this is uh, June. And so last month was May. And we were talking about... Uh, the Mental Health Awareness Month for May, right? Um, the awareness around that. So it's a lot going around around mental health. And so also that incorporates brain health. And so having Kimberly here is something that I'm really excited to do because her and I talk about brain health all the time. She's always giving me tips <laughs> on how I need to get some sleep <laughs> for my brain to function correctly. <laughs> She's really good at dropping those tips. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to first introduce you all to the world, to the community. Tell us about yourself. Kim, let's start with you. Well, my name is Kimberly Mitchell, and I am an educator and a memory and brain health consultant. Tell us what that means. So I have a class called Brain Booster, and Brain Booster is actually an online and in-person class that informs and builds the knowledge base that people need to be proactive about caring for their brain and memory as they age. As they age. So this is good for our seniors out there to, to listen to. Okay, and hopefully we'll give them some tips later on. And, and, and I mean, in all honesty, sorry, seniors, but also now we need to know that being proactive means you can start sooner than later. Absolutely. Right. We need to think about those things as we are young right now. Yes. <laughs> we will be aging, yes. um, uh, uh, you know, hopefully, <laughs> 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 prayerfully, <laughs> we will age. And so these tips will be great for us as well. Um, and then Brandarius, can you give us an introduction of who you are? So my name is Brandarius Johnson. I'm a Las Vegas native, um, just a passionate individual that's on a mission to help other people evolve, you know, and, you know, that's the that's the overview of hope. I feel like everybody need hope now, um, especially now that we're talking about mental health more. It's a global epidemic. And I think, you know, it's a personal calling for myself. So I just took my own personal story and uh, testimony and, and put it on a platform for other people to find strength through my transparency and vulnerability. I love that. And I hope that everybody else loves that as well and loves the conversation that we're about to bring today around that subject. Right. Um, giving everybody hope is what this program, I hope, is all about um, is bringing hope to the community for them to learn about public health. Right. So that they feel empowered so that they feel informed. Um, and it's just the facts. There's no politics here. There's no misinformation. We are actually trying to um, to resolve misinformation that's been out there. And so as we get started in this conversation, um, I thank you again for being here and let's get this show on the road. So, Kim, yes. as you talk about brain and aging in the community. Um, how is the black community affected by Alzheimer's and dementia at a higher rate than other communities? Well, what's interesting is that, um, first of all, one in nine Americans, 65 and over, <clears throat> excuse me, have Alzheimer's. They have it. Right. So that's a high, that's a staggering number. But then when we look at our community, African Americans are twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's or even related dementias wow. than white participants in research. Why is that? Well, what's <laughs> the stress of life is a major factor. Mm. Um, what happens in our middle years 
in 35, 38 to about 55 has a major impact on what happens to our brain cells and what happens to um, our ability to to hold on to those memories and keep our brain strong. Wow. Right. And then we look at um, what this country portrays retirement as. And we have to really, really keep uh, focus that retirement just ends a job. Yeah. Right. It doesn't end staying connected to learning and living and still thriving and having goals. I love that. And so after retirement, people tend to see the, the, the memory and the brain diminish because they get lazy in a sense. You know, yes, we work hard. Yes, we deserve to have um, some retreat after working diligently for years and years. Right. But we have to stay connected. Um, we have to stay connected to some kind of a personal curriculum. Okay. To keep the brain. To keep learning. Yes, to keep learning. Because the weird thing is, even though, you know, our community is twice as likely to develop Alzheimer's, we also are 35% less likely to be diagnosed. Wow. And that's because a lot of times we aren't, um, we aren't asked about the brain. We aren't, right. we don't talk about that with our doctors, you know, along our health our health journey or we say things like don't go tell our business right <laughs> right exactly that's a big stigma in our community mm -hmm. is that we don't want anyone to know our business we don't want to know we don't want someone to know that uh, our mother is suffering she's forgetting things or she's yeah. doing things that are kind of weird or outside of her normal right mm -hmm. we don't want people to know that because then it shows or we think it shows a reflection on our actual family but actually not getting that diagnosed could be a reflection on our family, right? It can. And I think, too, that we have to be um, more, you know, just more intentional when going to the doctors. I wish I could, you know, make a part of what doctors have to ask you in a physical, you know, how do you treat your brain right. on a daily? Right. You know, how are you sleeping? Because sleep deprivation, people don't understand, is directly linked to Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm. Because what happens to your brain when you sleep is a detox. And so the same way your gut, you know, the gut is like a second brain, but the same way that your gut needs um, a, a replenishment, so right. does your brain at night in order to put everything you learned in the right file cabinet, mm -hmm. to dust the corners, to do all of those things. And right. hence, that's why if you don't get proper sleep, you wake up foggy, you wake up and you can't make good decisions and you're irritable because your right. office is a mess. Mm. Your office is a mess. Gotcha. And so people don't really realize that in our community, the sleeplessness that comes along with the stresses we have, right? The bad food that's in our communities, mm. right? Because food is a major, there's nothing better to do than to feed your brain with your right. nutrition and people don't get that and, and I'm glad you brought that up mm -hmm. that actually takes us back to our last show um, where we had two uh, people on shelf Stacy and Lachelle Whitmore and we talked about nutrition and the importance of how it really does affect your holistic health mm -hmm. and so now you're bringing up how food also impacts our brain it impacts every part of us and just knowing I mean even down I am huge on meditation in my classes um, and meditation not in a sense of it doesn't have to be connected to a religion or a spirit right but cleansing Cleansing your thoughts. Mm. You know, people don't understand that ruminating and just focused on negativity. We hear the cliche, uh, mind over matter. Yeah. From the day we're born until the day we die, this entire life is about having a grasp on mind over matter. Mm. Whenever we're stressed, any of us, me included, the matter got on top of our mind. That's good. Right. So yeah. if you don't keep your mind over the matter by having a default calm, by being able to get a bad diagnosis right. and navigate through that because you have a healthy brain. Right. So some right. things that I do, I get in my car and if I just I just need to silence sometimes. Right. Sometimes I just drive in silence. I put my phone on. Do not disturb. I don't want to hear the phone ring. And most people listen to a podcast. I listen to podcasts and things through um, different times. But when I need to be silent, I just be silent and yeah. I just drive. Right. Because there's so much noise in the world. Right. And as you talk about mind over matter, sometimes we have to take that back. Right. You have to. You have to because the brain, I mean, is as much as we know cancer and AIDS and all these other things, COVID, right. all these other things that are happening health wise. Right. If our brain isn't intact and our mental state isn't intact to navigate through whatever we get, we just got a whole lot worse. Yeah. So the brain is really the most important part of ourselves to protect. Wow. Because it is our central system of getting through this And if you get life. brain damage, it affects your whole entire life. Yep. 
your whole entire life. And I don't think we take that seriously enough. We don't. And and thank God. I mean, there was a time when we all, you know, thought you grew to be 20, 21 years old and you developed these neurons. And then life was just about slowly losing them over time. And neuroplasticity science has proved that through neuroplasticity, meaning we can rebuild neurons. Mm. Right. There's no longer that myth. I hear people all the time say, oh, my memory's shot. You know, I'm, I'm headed downhill now. Right. But you can do things. It's nothing different than working out in a gym. It's just the mental workout is knowledge and new information and really, really in, engrossing yourself in something like a new language. Languages are one of the mm-hmm. best ways to get neuronal paths growing and to increase your brain and memory capacity. Wow, you have just dropped some jewels on us. I want to bring our good brother in here, uh, Brent Darius. He's sitting here like, yeah. (laughs) What can you add to this conversation? I know uh, mental hope, um, mind, right? Mind over matter. How did you find your mind over matter while writing your book and and having hope in your your mind? Okay, so I'm going to jump right off the porch and be 100% honest. Uh, (laughs) Finding my mind, the, the most important statement I heard from, my, from heard myself say was there's no surgery for depression. Mm. And that came from an interaction with, you know, with a doctor. I lost a close friend to suicide. And, you know, a year, a year later I went and I and I pretty much said, you all need some help. You know, the anxiety had kicked in. Um, nobody around me knew really how to help me or guide me in the situation. So I found myself in that doctor's office. And um, it's funny when you, when you, when you, get or receive or take any type of medication for anxiety or depression it always say that you know be mindful because the medication can um, make those symptoms a lot more stronger wow so you know I was sitting there talking to the doctor and he said uh sir to be honest with you if you beat this when you beat this the way you beat it is going to be between your ears so in that moment I knew there's nothing that you can do to just make this magically go away and it was a definitely a mind over matter situation so as I'm sitting there, I'm listening, I'm taking it in, I'm staring hard, I'm smiling, I'm like, yo, she really putting this on game because, you know, your mind is is the motherboard of your whole system. It's the mm-hmm. computer, and I think we sometimes take for granted how much control we do have or have over ourselves and what we put in our minds from our food to what we read to watching TV. It's, it's all an intake, and that's how we're shaping our lives, so... You know, I absolutely agree. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, we use cliche things and we'd be like, oh, they lost their mind. But yeah. they really did for oh, that moment, right? For real. <laughs> for real. I agree. So how how did Mental Hope come about? So Mental Hope came about, you know, um, after I did the 100-mile suicide run for uh, suicide prevention. You know, So many people reached out. was like, yo, what's your story? What's day one? What's the mental, mental hustle continues? And there was so much shake around mental health and when you mental, mention mental health, just kind of like mentioning religion or faith, mm-hmm. people cringe. Yes. So I was like, you know what? I have to create an avenue for myself where I can talk about mental health related issues without people putting up that defense right away. Exactly. And, you know, moving over here, like you said, you know, talking about the mind is not it's not over because you feel like you can't remember or you're getting older. It's over when you give up the, the pursuit of becoming better. Come on now. So the same mm. thing with, with health. I was like, you know what? We need hope in every element of our lives. I don't care how much money you have, right. where you were born, what your history looked like, what you've accomplished. You need hope to, to keep the pursuit of life. And so we've I, seen that in some of our celebrities that have as much money, more money on. than what we can even imagine, right? Yeah. And they've literally taken their lives. Right. Kate Spade, um, yeah. a couple, I can't think of the guy that was the chef. Um, that traveled the world. Um, his name escapes me, but yeah. loved him, loved watching him, loved you know seeing all the food that he was eating, and yeah. just didn't know that he was suffering from right. depression. You know, it's it's that's what makes it so important because sometimes you really don't know. Yeah. Like, and I and I try to tell people like, because from the outside before, you know, I lost my friend to suicide. You you want to just give the encouragement? Oh, be strong, be strong. But I realized sometimes people say be strong because they don't know what else to say. Mm, So now, you know, just living in my own journey and leading from my own experiences, sometimes I tell people like it's like telling somebody who's drunk and asking them what are they thinking. Clearly, they aren't thinking. (laughs) And you take a ball of yarn that's perfectly um, out the package of how it's supposed to be used. You can do that. But if you take a ball of yarn, it's all tangled up. You can't expect them to serve the same purpose at the same time because one is tangled up. And one is not. Right. And that's how I feel like our brains are when you take all the stress that you mentioned, 
and all the daily responsibilities that some of us have to uphold, you can't, you can't, you can't operate from the same position of not being, you know, tangled up and discombobulated. So I try to sit with mental health and depression and anxiety, or just even just being overwhelmed, like being overwhelmed will make you feel like you're depressed. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm not a clinician, so I never try to walk those lines and put a diagnosis on anybody, but I know the feelings of being overwhelmed will lead to depression. Right. You're so stressed out that you don't even want to get out of bed. You don't want to go take a shower. And then over a course of time, that becomes a depression. Right. So we have this concept of called sad days. It stands for suicide, anxiety, and depression. And I feel like if we can get to people before the anxiety controls their life and, and, and turns into depression, then we can defeat some of the suicides we have here today. So as we talk about men's uh, mental health uh, month, and how does this mental health and what you do, mental hope, how do you relate to the black men or just men in our community in general? Man, we could talk about this for a whole year. <laughs> but I think the most important part is that people have this um, this perception that strength and courage comes from being strong and figuring it all out. Or I think the opposite. I think it takes strength and courage to open up and express where you need help. Mm. I don't follow That's that good. tough guy macho. You know, if I feel something and I'm going to validate it and, you know, even some people who believe in manifesting things, like if I say, you know, I'm having a tough day, no, you know, you're just having a, no, no, I'm having a tough day and it's okay. Right. Because the first step to, you know, making progress with anything is to acknowledge where the need is. Right. So it's like like your car gas light coming on and you're like, nah, I don't need no gas. I'm good. That thing tripping. Like, nah, (laughs) you need to put some gas in there or you're going to stop. Right. So I try to make it as simple as possible. And for men, like reach out, open your mouth and create an atmosphere where we don't have to make things so weird. You know, even this morning I had a conversation with with an individual and and I caught myself in a moment. I said, how you doing? And he's like, I'm doing well. You know, everything's going well. And I double back. I'm like, okay, so how are you doing mentally? Mm. Because just by asking if you're okay, you know, I realized that everything in his life may be going well. Right. But there's a small piece in his mind that's chaotic or, you know. So being intentional about how what we ask people, how 100%. are you doing mentally? Yeah. Okay. And diving deeper into it. Like I, I know even just in passing, if you ask a person how they're doing, oftentimes they're like, I'm good. You really don't have enough time to sit there in that moment. So when I do have the time, I'm being as intentional as I can. And even, you know, with my messages, the world wouldn't spend the same without you. Like, that's a declaration to myself to, you know, let as many people um, as I know in the world as possible. Like, you have a purpose here. And regardless of what your circumstances are telling you now in your situation, like, you have a very valuable purpose here on this earth. I love that. And I love that you're bringing hope to people. And what does hope stand for again? Helping other people evolve. (laughs) <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I love that. As soon as you said it, I was just like, hey, that's a whole word. Yeah. That's a whole word, like we say in the black church community. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and that's why I, I went with hope because it's like I want to anchor into people's hearts. Um, I don't want to create anything that they can kind of look at. Like, I don't need that. Everybody in this world need hope all the Everybody. time. And especially yeah. now. These last two years have been very hard mentally, yeah. physically, emotionally, um, spiritually right. on people. People have either found religion or they have lost it because of what's been going on and that affects our brain and our affects our mental health and right. everything as well so I love how these two conversations are coming together as Kim talks about brain and Alzheimer's and dementia and you talk about how all of that actually affects your mental health as well yeah. um, Kim I wanted to come back to you um, and I just wanted you to give us some tips because you said earlier that you have you know people need to stay active yes. what are some tips that we can give people out there they can stay active with their brains because social I, media yeah actually does something different social media I read something several years ago that blew my mind and I'm not a big social media person even though I think I need to embrace it a little more right but it was I believe it was a psychology today article and it said two minutes of scrolling on Instagram takes you through 20 emotions wow and that the brain can't handle it you see the baby you're happy you see the news you cry then you're defeated then you feel hopeless then you feel full of hope then you feel like someone's in love then and that is just overload for the brain wow so the news is the same way and in you know elderly people anyone 55 65 and over all of us need to be mindful um, of the news and just keep putting negativity in our brain. Um, My son, who has always been an old soul, I love that when he was young, he said to me one time, be careful what you eat. 
mm. pointing to his head. To he his said, head. Mom, what we eat in our bodies comes out. What we eat in our mind stays there. Mm. That's so good. be careful what you eat. Um, if I had to give tips, of course, um, the class that I teach and um, in the book that's coming up, I have an acronym called PRIMED. And it, uh, primed are six things that can keep you that you really should be doing every day, which is puzzles, meaning some kind of engagement. Right. And one of the biggest tips I can give is that you need to be on a curriculum. You need to be engaged with life. You need to have something that you are learning or studying all the time. I have an 87-year-old who went back to a book she started writing in her 40s. And she's 87 and came to me wow. and was like, yeah, I'm thinking I might even adapt it for a movie. And I was like, I, I love, love her enthusiasm, <laughs> but she's in it. Yeah. You know, she's learning how to write a script. She's so staying engaged is, is very important. Making sure that you take time every day because the brain doesn't really care what you solve. The right. brain cares how hard you try. Wow. Effort mm. is everything. Wow. Right. And so puzzles, the R is for rest, getting quality sleep. We want interaction for the I and prime. Mm -hmm. We want meditation to keep ourselves settled, even in hard or, you know, tough times. We right. want to make sure exercise. Of course, we want to do that as much as we can. Yes. Walking is so underrated. Yeah. Walking is incredible no matter what age you are. Yeah. And then, of course, our diet. In our diet. Mm -hmm. So those things, I would say, you know, uh, the biggest tip is that engagement. Staying engaged yes, and not social engaged. media engagement, but mm -hmm. engagement in puzzles and yes. not even watching that much TV because I've read where watching too much TV hurts the brain, right? Yeah, and there's ways to piggyback everything you're doing. I teach that if you're watching a series, you know, write a summary about it. It sounds so many things that are good for your brain we did when we were children. Mm. Vocabulary increasing becoming a wordsmith and playing scrabble and learning new words and using those new words yeah. is still one of the best things you can do for your brain i love that yeah. because we're all writers here <laughs> <laughs> we all have published books or books that are about to be published yeah. so as you talk about writing and how writing actually helps the brain yes. it makes me feel good about my craft yeah sometimes you know you want some other kind of creative gift you want to sing right <laughs> i always want to be a singer but <laughs> that didn't happen so i'm a writer right so i'm glad to know that my writing actually does help my brain exactly, exactly. <laughs> so as we talk about writing Kim you have a book coming up yes mid-July my book will be published it is called don't forget you're still alive Ooh. and it's a brain about um, how to care for the brain and the memory as we age what's the audience that is targeted for it is for I would say 55 and over and I say that because it's very important um, approaching retirement that you start to gauge your plan of action to stay engaged with life. I don't think everyone is qualified to retire. Mm. I think some people who don't have a game plan need to stay on part time or do heavy volunteer work. If you don't have a game plan, the brain is like anything else. If I don't do the exercise, it's going to turn right. mushy. And wow. so I think that 55 and over is really, I mean, even our communities that used to be 65 and over are now 55 and over. 55 and over. I think that's a pivotal time to start to gear up and kind of see what those older years, what you want them to look like. Right. And so this book will be available mid-July and it'll be on your website. What is it'll that? It'll be on my website, which is brainboosterclass.com. Okay. But it also will be available through Amazon and I'm praying that it'll be on the shelf in bookstores. Okay. Yes. Prayer works. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Sure. And Brandarius, talk about your book and where can people find it? So my book is available on Amazon uh, as well as my website, brandariusjohnson.com. If you go through my website, you'll get a signed copy. And tell us the name of it. Mental Hope. <laughs> We're here to help other people evolve, and there's no surgery for depression. I every, love that. And every day is day one. I love that. What is, so what is day one? I, I followed you. So the way that you and I connected was on social media, as bad as that is. <laughs> on social, now that we know, right, about our brain. On social media, and I saw all that you were doing. Plus, you were connected to all of my other friends and colleagues. Yeah. Um, and I started seeing day one ambition. What is that? Yeah. So day one ambition, um, it's a concept that came to mind the day I found out. It was my first love. I lost to suicide. And uh, through a text message. So, you know, when I when I read that text message, I, I thought to myself, like, every day is day one because yesterday is gone and tomorrow may never come. So that was the way I felt in that moment. And then, you know, just day in and day out of just, you know, using that philosophy as my own bootstraps to continue to get up 
it became a, a pillar of resilience and perseverance and faith, hope, and everything, you know, righteousness. So, you know, just sharing my testimony and little tidbits of uh, working out, like you mentioned, people start, you know, gravitating to every day as they want. And yeah. then day one ambition became a brand. And then the messages that follow over the years became, you know, full foundation of, uh, of hope and love. So, so every day we should wake up and say it's day one. You know what? I, I try to be extremely careful with what I tell people what I think they should do. But <laughs> for my for my personal testimony, like I do my best to like it's day one. Okay. You know? And and sometimes even when the days are too big of a piece to bite, hour one, minute one, second one. Mm, because mm. sometimes I still go to that place where I'm like, man, I'm not feeling it right now. Right. And this day for like a year. Yeah. And not, you know, just being a writer, I can go back to sometimes in my testimony when I say you know, when related to like the unjust and the police killings, I'm like, every day we make it back home alive is a celebration of a year lived. Right. So, you know, every day is day one works, but scale it to whatever your mind needs to be able to, you know, continue to move forward. I love that. Um, I wanted to ask, in your opinion, why should men, especially black men, take better care of their mental health? I'm going to tell you exactly why. Uh, starting from as young as I can remember, I was I was. If you go into the first page of my book, it talk about, you know, how hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And for me, that stemmed from the separation of my parents and spending my whole life thinking, you know, my pops just didn't want to be involved. And, you know, realizing that, you know, I really put so much of an emphasis on wanting people to feel the way I feel. I realized that whole time I just needed to, to express what I was feeling. So when I think about it all the time for, for the young kids who grow up, who maybe don't have all the answers to the questions that they're pondering in their mind, it impacts how they act. Yeah. You get aggression, you might get kids that are introverted, you might get kids that overeat, you might get kids that are destructive, and that behavior is labeled, whatever it's labeled, that prevents a kid from getting that care, and then they grow up and they become adults, and now these same things that they're displaying gets them locked up, mm -hmm. gets them put in the mental ward, right? gets them blackballed, pushes them to the street. So I think all of that is an extension of of why we need to care for our mental health as men. And if you feel something, ask questions about it. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be a prisoner of your own mind because one thing that I've learned in, in therapy myself, you know, you, you you will be held accountable for your actions. Absolutely. Regardless if it was a, a mental crisis, a meltdown, an accident, you will be held accountable. And because of the disparities, the racial disparities in our country, black men are held at a higher at a higher uh, <laughs> rate, right? 100%. Yeah. And even being, you know, in a position where I'm really doing everything in my power to be positive, there's still people that I can feel try me or want to challenge the world when spending the same without you. And, you know, it, it used to be easy. So they to, see that shirt and they challenge that. Yeah. Wow. And, and, you know, people come from, you know, different angles. They want to get close enough. Who, who are you really? You know, my dad asked me this question. He said, B, outside of the truck, the brand, the shirts, who are you? Mm, that's and a good that question. question was more powerful than anything I've ever been asked. And I just sat with myself. And that's why I bring it back to the basics before being an author, being a speaker, son, brother, any of those things. I'm a person and a person that have felt, you know, all those emotions that you mentioned. And I spend my time with them mm -hmm. and, and I make it you know, to myself that it's OK to feel what you're feeling. And I would just encourage everybody to feel what you're feeling. Right. You know, as, as men, as far as I can remember, you get hurt. It's all good. Shake it off. Shake it nah, off. This hurt, man. I'm, I'm crying. That's a reaction. My body's letting me know I'm feeling something. Right. But I also know what it feels like to cry tears of joy. So that's good. Well, thank you for that. And I, I appreciate this conversation. And we could talk all day, as you yeah. know. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's only a 30 minute show. So <laughs> as we wrap it up, um, I appreciate your last words. Kim, do you have any last words about our brain? Um, any t um, you already given us some tips, but any last words? I do. I just think that one of the um, piggybacking on what you said, one of the most powerful things we can ask ourselves every single day is how did I treat my brain today? Did I stress a lot? Did I eat correctly? All the things that I was talking about that we should be going through that state, whether we're primed. Right. Right. How did I treat? No one really asks us, you know, when when people say, oh, you you teach brain health, you know, well, my brain's gone. You know, I don't have my memory anymore. And I, the first thing I say is, well, how do you treat it and how often do you utilize it? That's good. Right. Celebrate your memories yes. and utilize taking care of your brain. 
Yes. And that's a great way to end the show. Um, I want to thank our guests, uh, Kimberly Mitchell and Brandarius Johnson for coming on today um, and just schooling us on some brain health, some mental health. Again, um, I know this is another conversation that we're having, but we're going to keep having it in all of our discussions on on public, uh, just the facts, public health, um, because it's one of those things that is big in our community right now. We're seeing a lot of people suffer. A lot of violence is happening in, in the Las Vegas community because of mental health. Right. So I appreciate you all coming on here and sharing some hope and bringing some hope (laughs) to everyone.